Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Ezra and Nehemiah. This is designed by Shem Phillips and S.J. McDonald. It's from Renegade Game Studios. Uh, this is a solo-friendly, let's see, one to four, I think, yeah, one to four player game. Uh, covering the uh, historical account in the Bible of Ezra, the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah. I mean, the Jews who had been captive uh, returned to Israel to rebuild the city. And so in this game, um, when Cyrus lets you go, then you're going to take time um, rebuilding the city. So I'm fascinated by this one primarily because there's very few good Christian themed board games out there. There's been a few of them lately. I mean, most of the good ones, I mean, I hate to say it because they're not good games, but they're at least biblically sound or more like trivia games. Um, but when people try to create a thematic uh, game using biblical history, it never, it usually doesn't come out well. Um, there've been very few. There's been, to be honest, I can't even think of any that have been successful. I know some of you will disagree. If you want to leave your comments below, you know, in the video, that's fine. I just, I have found them wanting games like commissioned, 80, 30, so on and so forth. They start messing with biblical history, playing fast and loose, making things. Obviously this is an editorial and this has nothing to do with Ezra Nehemiah, but as I, as I read about this and talked to Renegade, I was like, this seems, at least on the surface, like they got it right, like they're they're using the biblical account, but they're not um, uh, distorting it to make a game. They're putting the game secondary to keeping the biblical narrative correct, and that I do appreciate. But regardless, first things first, let's dig in and see what you get in the box. Okie dokie, here we go. So as I mentioned, this is for one to four players. First of all, I like the, I do like the artwork, the original artwork that's on there. That's very cool. Hopefully we'll find out who the artiste was when we get to the rule book. My camera is actually doing uh, facial recognition on everybody. The faces are done so well. All right, so here we go. Start with the advertisement for Renegade Games. Adrian's Wall and Raiders of the North Seas. And then we do have our rule book. So, hold back there. So the rule book is full color. It is three, well it's actually 40 pages. Um, it is the size of the box, but in this case, normally that's a bad thing because most boxes are huge. And then the rule books end up being like these 12 by 12 monstrosities, but this is actually kind of a manageable size, but it is 40 pages. Uh, it is full color, it is glossy stock. In his first year as king of Persia, Cyrus the Great issued a decree in writing to the Israelite exiles living under his rule. The God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to build a temple for him in Jerusalem. Any of his people may go up to Jerusalem and Judah to build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel. And in any place where survivors may now be living, the people of Persia are to provide them with silver, gold, goods, livestock, and offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem from Ezra 1 verses 2 through 4 and then uh, later uh, Nehemiah the cupbearer was sent by Artaxerxes may the king live forever why should I not look sad when the city of my ancestors lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire if it pleases you and if I have found favor in your sight let me go to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried that I may rebuild it Nehemiah 2 3 through 5 so in the game of Ezra and Nehemiah, you're going to be the player with the most victory points at game's end. Points are gained primarily by building the temple, rebuilding the city walls and gates, and by teaching the Torah to the returning exiles. Players may also seek to develop their land, travel to settlements outside the city walls, or stoke the altar's fire to keep it burning day and night. The prophets Haggai and Zechariah will be doing their part to keep the people focused on what is most important very cool. So here's a note from the designers with some lessons they took. While these historical events actually took place over multiple decades, the game has been condensed to a three-week period to highlight the importance of the working week and Sabbath in both ancient and modern Jewish culture. All right, so anyway, 
here we go. So starts off with all the components. We've got cards. We're gonna see all this obviously at the board. Uh, the solo mode does have a solo board. So that's good. It's gonna have a dedicated solo variant. Covering setup here. I do like that it's got the, it looks appears to have, uh, when you've got one player, a lot of games describe how to play for four players and then change this for two or three players and then you have to look in the back of the book and find out the solo. It looks like it's got the solo set up right alongside, at first glance anyway. So it's full color as you can see, not a lot of text, a lot of in-game graphics to show you the um, examples of play. So that's very cool. Alright, we won't go over the whole rules here. I hope to do a playthrough of this very soon. Looks like I've got double layer boards. So we do have a draw bag, just a plain kind of sand colored fit with the theme draw bag. Uh, my hand will fit in it. I don't know what's going to go in here, how full it's going to get. That's pretty decent quality. So then we've got our boards. These are, I assume, the player boards because there's four of them. They match. They are double layered, so they have the recessed areas to put things, except for these card areas, they look like they're recessed, but that's just a trompe l'oeil effect. Um, these are smooth, but these for the markers and et cetera, and cards, I would guess, and tokens are gonna be um, recessed. So there are four of those, one for each player. Um, we've got this board here as well. Now these are not recessed. Um, this may be the solo board. Then we've got our regular game board, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. We'll open that up and take a full look at that. We have extra bags for storage. And then we have cubes, a bag of nice chunky wooden cubes. They're very big, probably about uh, almost a centimeter. These are your resources. We have stone, cinders, gold, and wood. Got a nice big bag of those and then we've got our more wooden pieces these are the player pieces we have 66 workers plus a couple of uh, white ones plus 16 for each player and the different player colors you've got purple red orange and a light blue and here we have tents and victory point markers we got uh, one of each so one tent, one victory point marker for each player, as well as, uh, you see the little flame here of the altar marker. And then we've got blessing markers here, as well as our two prophet, so the Zechariah prophet. Has his arms lifted to God, it's very cool. And then Haggai. Pointing the way. So you can see that there. He is pointing the way. So that's very cool. Alright, so that's our wooden pieces there. And then we have some other stuff here. We have a lot of tiles. There's a lot of punch boards here. Okay, so they're a mixture, as most games are, you know, where they have the same pattern. So we've got a lot of coins, and then we've got various game pieces. They are reasonably thick. Not the thickest I've seen, but they're not thin. The, the boards seem thin when you pull them out, you know, but then when you pull the actual markers out, the, uh, the uh, uh, game pieces, they are pretty, pretty sturdy. So there's one. There's another. These may be, no, this is a different one. So we got the coins, but the, uh, what do you call these? Development tiles. So these tiles are slightly different. These are scroll tiles. So you can tell by the back. And then these are results. And then you've got the, some various characters here. You've got Zerubbabel. You've got Ezra. You've got Nehemiah. And these are some more scrolls. They've got different uh, backs on them for the different levels. And then some five money. 
So we've got the individual coins and then the multipliers. And then we've got help, help tiles, some more tokens, some more money. This is one of these for each player. And then a solo help board. Some more multipliers, we have food. We have multipliers of food. Okay, so here's, here's food, the bread. Couldn't tell what that was, but that's loaves of bread. And then these are five loaves, five coins, single coins. So we look at the shofar for the first player. Ceremonial horn. And then we've got two packs of cards. We've got some smaller cards and some larger cards. All right, so we're going to look at the larger cards first here. So we have character cards, and it says there's 10 in each player color. Oh, I see, if you look at the back here. So you've got these, and then you've got the different characters and the colors that we saw already. Nice distribution there. They do have you know, female characters as leaders. A little, a little uh, anachronism there, I would think. Obviously, I guess you're not playing Ezra and Nehemiah, you're just maybe their assistants who are doing the work, because here's Nehemiah and Ezra and Zerubbabel here, who apparently are not uh, player characters. But again, the artwork is really nice. So maybe having these as assistants help you. So you have a mason, a singer, a musician, carpenter, gatherer, and they obviously give you benefits. A jeweler, a lookout, a scholar, soldier, teacher. These measure, in case you're trying to sleeve them, these are gonna measure, looks to be about 50, let's just do one. They're gonna be about 54 by 86. If you're looking for sleeves, 54 by 86 millimeters. And then we've got these smaller cards. And these are wall cards for building the wall. And those again are in each player color. And they just allow you and they look like they give you various benefits as you help build the wall. And that's cool. So there's 12 for each player in their color. And then we have, uh, these are scheme cards. These are for the solo mode, the ones with the scheming little sheep on the back, lamb on the back. So that's for the solo mode. And then we've got uh, two cards for the altar. These are called altar cards, double-sided. And then we've got neutral wall cards. gate cards. So we've got the water, the water gate, the valley gate, the fish gate, the dung gate. I like the graphics on them. So water has water on it. Valley, some sand. Fish gate has a little fish that looks similar to the Jesus fish symbol that you see around. The dung gate obviously has piles of poo. Muster gate and the east gate. And then we have focus cards for the solo mode with the lion. Again, very nice artwork. And these smaller cards, they measure uh, 42 by 67. 42 by 67 on the smaller cards. So let's look at that game board. So it is a, it is a square panel board, it's six panels, but each panel, I mean, the, the thing comes in about eight and a quarter inches. So six panels is gonna be you know, like 24 by 17 or so, roughly, 17 by 22. So not too big, not too cumbersome. And there is the whole board. It is single-sided, as you can see. And uh, 
It is single layered, obviously, and we've got the sections of the Torah that are going to be taught. And you've got the walls that need to be built. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, in terms of building around the board, kind of like Snowdonia, where you're working to build the train track. So here you're trying to build the walls, but also maintain your focus on uh, not just uh, building the walls for security, but building up the, uh, the spiritual lives of the returning Israelites. It is, uh, it's, it, it is small, um, but it looks like it's, it's got everything it needs, obviously. Um, I don't like it get too crowded. It is very, it is very dense. You know, everything's really close. Like this looks like to be a scoring track, maybe. You know, victory point track. So it's right in the middle of everything else. So it seems like it might, without playing it, I don't know, but it might get a little uh, um, fiddly. You know, with knocking stuff around. But we'll just have to see how it goes when I get a chance to play it. It's really close here. You can just kind of move it around. So, got the gates and the wall spaces. Like I said, here's the scripture sections that you're gonna be learning. I do appreciate that it's it's the five books of the Torah: Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's staying true to the theme, and hopefully the game. As I read the rules, it actually uh, it actually does not muck with the Bible. That would be really, really awesome. So I'm hopeful for that. Anyway, I'm going to fold this up and we'll do a recap of everything you get in the box. So if you pick up a copy of Ezra and Nehemiah from Shim Phillips, SJ McDonald, Renegade Game Studios, you're going to get that one deck of smaller cards, which was several different decks within the one deck that they give you. You're going to get the character cards, 10 for each player. You're going to get the stack of punch boards with various uh, development tiles, currencies, food, and player reference cards. You're going to get lots of wooden counters and tokens and player pieces. You're going to get some extra bags to store everything. You're going to get that temple board, double-sided temple board, two different sides to play. Four dual-layered player boards, one for each player. That main game board that we saw. The drawstring uh, bag for drawing tiles. Advertisement. And the 48-page Ezra and Nehemiah rulebook. And that is everything that comes in. Ezra and Nehemiah from Renegade Game Studios. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!